I want to test ChatGPT agents on an accounting task. I'm going to try having it reconcile zero. So I've got ChatGPT 5 up on the screen here. I'm going to turn on agent mode by clicking the plus icon and then selecting agent mode. I'm going to prompt this agent to help me reconcile my checking account in my zero file. I want you to do this in the uh, demo company US file. So now zero is thinking and hopefully it's going to navigate over to the zero website and then ask me to log in. And that's what it's doing right now. So it so, sets up a virtual desktop that you can interact with still with mouse and keyboard. Okay. Now I need to log in. It has a takeover button. So this is when I can take over and I can log in using my credentials. Now I'm going to click on finish controlling and I'm gonna let the AI agent take over again. So does it only show it on the screen when it needs your input? Or no. Is it like I can watch it the whole time? You can watch it the whole time. So it's going back now to taking over and you can see it thinking through on the screen as and it goes. Zero. And you can, yeah, we're in the demo company now and it's clicking on reconcile 29 items under the checking account. So you gave it no knowledge. It's just like, that's the button I need to go find and use. Yeah. And I guess one way that you could improve how well it navigates zero is to create a project in ChatGPT and upload the documentation for how zero works. If you could somehow extract all the documentation, but it will just click around and try to figure out what to do. You can guide it. I could prompt it if it starts to make mistakes, but we'll just see how well it does without me telling it what to do. So it's on the checking account right now the screen where you match transactions. And it's looking at the city limousines deposit for $100 that's coming in on the bank feed. And it's trying to look for a match. It wants to match the $100 received to an invoice or to something else. And now it's moving on to the second transaction. It's not super fast. This is not necessarily faster than me doing this myself at this point. But the difference is you could have this doing this on 10 zero files all at the same time while you're going to get a cup of coffee or doing the rest of your podcast. Essentially. Right. So here's what it's done is it has given me the most recent unreconciled transactions from the demo company checking account. So it's given me one, two, three, four, five, six transactions, and it gives me the date payee, a reference, the amount, the type, and its findings. So for instance, with the city limousines deposit for $100, it says zero doesn't have a $100 invoice to match. Open invoices are different amounts, and it gives me those. And it suggests that this could be a partial payment against one of them or a separate receive money transaction. And it wants me to tell it what to do now. So I could say city limousines record this as a miscellaneous income uh, transaction don't match to an invoice. Now, the second one is this check 1236 from Trucks and Property Management for $1,181.25. It's recommending that we can match it because it's already, zero is already suggesting the match. So I'll say Truxton, match it. Now, Ridgeway University, there's an amount for 6,000 and change. And it says there's a payment that matches the amount exactly in zero, and I'll say match it. Now here's another one that's going to be a little tricky. Jacaranda Maple Systems. This is a deposit for $2,000. AI says there's no matching invoice in zero for this deposit. It says a receive money transaction needs to be created and coded to an income account. Now that's not actually the ideal way to record this in zero because it's an advance payment. So I'm going to say, for the Jacaranda account, record this as a prepayment type transaction in zero. Smart agency, here's the next one, $4,500 that was spent. Zero says no existing, or ChatGPT says no existing bill payment matches this payment. It will need to be coded to an expense account. And I'll say smart agency code to consulting expense. And the last one is Swanson, Swanston Security for $59.55 code to office expense. Now I'm just gonna enter that. I wrote it all in one prompt 
And we're going to see if the agent can now go and do these things. Which is essentially what you do. Somebody would email you, I don't know what to do with these transactions. You email back one email with, with all five answers in there. It is plugging away. And it looks like it's now on the smart agency task to code it to consulting expenses. And it's selected the expense account 612, consulting and accounting. And it put a description in there for consulting services. See, that's nice. I didn't actually have to tell it to put in the description. It just thought to do that. Now it's going on the Swanston security transaction. It's selecting the correct vendor from the list. We already had one in there. And now it's going to go try to code it. What did I tell it to do? I told it to code it to office expense. So this should be pretty easy. I find that when I just tell it to code something to an expense account and that account exists or is very close to what I said, it will do this very reliably. And it's searching through the drop down menu and it found office expenses and it's choosing that as the expense account. And now it is going to probably enter a description. It's clicking in and it put office security services and it matched the transaction. It's very, very, very slow. But again, if you set it and you're doing something else and you have it work on 12 clients at the same time, you really don't care how slow it is you get the bang for the buck two hours if, later it's done if you're comfortable letting it go on its own okay so it skipped city limousines which was the first one and now it's going to try and go back to that one maybe it, it did the easy ones first that's interesting that's very human-like behavior so it's interesting here because when it originally looked at city limousines it tried to find a match so it clicked on the match tab and now it doesn't have the it doesn't see the area where you can create a transaction directly from the bank screen so it, it finally just figured out how to close that box and go back to where it was before. What's interesting about this is, like I heard a great description for how to, how to think about what is happening here. What is the AI's experience like? And it's sort of like this. Imagine that you open your eyes and you're looking at a computer screen and you receive an instruction, like somebody tells you to do something. And before you do the thing, you have to close your eyes and then try to move the mouse to the correct place and click. And then you get to open your eyes again. Because the way this is working is that it's just taking screenshots of the virtual desktop and it's sending the screenshot with a prompt to an AI, which then decides what action to take. So it's sort of like screenshot prompt, take the action. Did it work? No? Okay, try to figure out what went wrong. Click on the right place. That's why it's so slow. It's not viewing it in real time. It's yep. just viewing a snapshot. Whereas when you and I look at something, our brains are getting that information feed continuously. So that's why it struggles with like complex interfaces or any interface that's designed in a way where you have to be like very precise. It can misclick and then it gets stuck and has to figure out how to undo. Okay, so we're back. It says that I finished reconciling the outstanding transaction for city limousines. And it opened up the create option for the $100 deposit. It selected city limousines as the contact and it chose other revenue as the income account to reflect miscellaneous income, which is what we wanted it to do because we decided uh, it was a payment on an old invoice and it should just go to miscellaneous income and it did it. But what did it do? What did it do with the difficult one that I wanted it to deal with the prepayment? Did it record the prepayment properly? So what it did is it recorded a receive money transaction for $2,000 and it coded it to prepayments. Now that is wrong because prepayments is an asset account in this file. And then I don't want it to be a receive money. I want it to actually be the prepayment type. So I'm going to say, please undo the Jacaranda transaction and reconcile it as a prepayment transaction type in zero with a liability account. So now we're gonna see if it can do that because that's a lot more complicated than just recording a receive money or a spend money transaction. It was successfully able to undo the transaction as requested. And now it's trying to re-reconcile it in the correct manner. It still is getting it wrong. It wants to record this as a receive money transaction. It's now selected the correct liability account, 
revenue received in advance, but it needs to record it as like a prepayment so that that can then be applied to a future invoice. So I'm saying don't record it as a receive money transaction, record it as a prepayment transaction. It has successfully figured out how to create the prepayment type transaction. It had to navigate to the add details section, which is not obvious. And it selected prepayment and it selected the correct liability account. It put the invoice number in the reference field. It looks like it's ready and it's asking me to confirm if I want to save the transaction. And I'm going to say yes. So there we go. It did it. I wonder if this is something that we could fix in the future if I created a project and I gave it like instructions on how to handle prepayments. If I added that to the project instructions, would it then know to do this automatically instead of creating a receive money, spend money transaction? So this demo that I'm doing of GPT-5 interacting with zero clicking around, it's might not seem that impressive because it's doing dumb stuff. But if I somehow gave it all the documentation for where everything is and what to do, maybe it could correctly record a prepayment as a prepayment type transaction. And so there's a lot of potential here. Yeah, on like, the surface, if you just only look at what you just tried to do, somebody's gonna say, Blake, you could just went to zero and click those five transactions off and be done. And it would take you three minutes and you'd be done with this. But you can't do that with a thousand clients at the same time, but you could make this work on this assignment on a thousand clients at the same time. You might have to check in on it and watch it, but, and it could work all night, 24 seven. And that's the, that's the offset of the accuracy, right? Is right. You could just have, these are like employees that work 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What if this was an agent that acted continuously and it's just switching from file to file in yeah. my dashboard and it just looks for new transactions every day in every client and it reconciles what it's confident it can reconcile and then anything that it's not confident about, it asks a question. Let's say it sends that question to Slack and then I can just tell it what to do. And then it goes and does that. That's like how I worked with my human bookkeepers when I had my firm. Their job was to go through every file every day, work, on, work through the transactions and ask questions of the client and me if they weren't clear on what to do. And that way we had constantly daily or weekly reconciled books. Continuous, yeah. Continuous, continuously up-to-date books. And I think we're gonna get to the point where we could have an AI agent in our firm just going through and reconciling stuff like I do every day. I still do this. I, I co close the books. I pop in I categorize the transactions every day. Five, six days a week yeah. for sure. That way I don't have to forget about it. I don't forget about it.